Hello, my name is Ken Ginter, and I'm an assistant professor at Rutgers University. And the purpose of today's presentation is to talk about the dynamic appraisal of situational aggression, otherwise known as DASA. Uh, my contact information, as always, is on this first slide. Special thanks goes out to Michelle Gallietta for the original version of this slide deck that she created. So before I get started, I want to give some credit where credit is due. Uh, the SHPRI, or SHPRI as we call it, is the State Hospital Psychiatric Rehabilitation Initiative. Uh, it is a mission by Rutgers University to improve the quality of care for the patients and staff of New Jersey State Psychiatric Hospital, and it would not be possible without the generous support of the New Jersey Department of Health. So, got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, our mission is possible because of their support. So, with that, let's get rolling. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is how risk assessment has developed, um, the DASA specifically as a tool, the items, the process, and the scoring, and also the, the assessment is nothing without interventions. So we're going to prioritize uh, the need if, if you're going to be implementing the DASA as we are in the state psychiatric hospitals in New Jersey, there's got to be a follow-up. So let's start with structured risk assessment. Now in the past, people made judgments about uh, risk assessment by their gut or by what had happened recently. Uh, and neither one of those were necessarily perfect systems. There were a lot of false positives and people missed a lot of cues um, as well. Uh, what would happen is there would be an incident and then everybody would be really overly careful for a while and then they would let it slide again. So now this is starting to become more of a science where we look at specific criteria that correlate to violence, particularly in the inpatient um, setting. And the goal, of course, is reduced violence in a safer work environment for everybody. <coughs> so the DASA is not the first uh, of its tools. There's another one called the BROSET, which other hospitals are using. And part of the DASA is actually derived from the BROSET, some of these common elements. The DASA is a seven item tool, which is meant to be measured at least once daily. We'll go over each of these tools. And it's a combination for, of an assessment and also looking at that person's recent behavior. So this is a rather blurry version of the form. I apologize for that, but just give you an idea of how it's laid out. So you have your seven criteria here, which we will be going over in a little bit. And then for each of them, you see the days of the week here. And then the scoring is zero through one with a total score of seven. And then the other part is the record of that person's recent aggression. Uh, aggression, dangerousness towards objects, or other people, verbal aggression and physical aggression. You also have the option of adding self-injurious behavior if that's something else that you wanna look out for as well. There's cleaner versions of this form uh, online that you can use. So the seven items are irritability, impulsivity, unwillingness to follow directions, sensitivity to perceive provocation, easily angered when requests are denied, negative attitudes, and verbal threats. So we're gonna go through each of those one at a time. <clears throat> so irritability. Now, as we mentioned before, the scores are either zero or one. Zero is the patient has been calm during the last 24 hours, comfortable and relaxed. One is the person is considered easily annoyed or angered, unable to tolerate the presence of others. Now, very important piece here underneath. If the, if it's, if the person is irritable all the time, if that's their baseline, it's considered a zero. It's only when it's something out of the normal that it becomes a one. So it isn't irritable or not irritable. It's irritable as deviated from their baseline. So it's critical that you know the client in question, you know their normal irritability level. As we all know, some people are irritable every day, some people are never irritable. So that's the importance of that, the significance of that zero to one scoring. <clears throat> Impulsivity. Is there an increase in impulsivity uh, in those last, you know, is there a deviation from baseline? Anything that's observable in the last 24 hours um, or anything that you've seen seven days without violence? C, unwillingness to follow directions. Same deal. Zero, compliant or baseline. One is unusually angry and aggressive when given direction. The fourth item. Sensitivity to perceive provocation means everything is personal. The person reacts as if everything is meant to you know, square off with them. Those of you who work in forensic and correctional facilities, you probably see a lot more of this, people being accused of being punked and things like that. So again, uh, no sensitivity to provocation, zero. 
baseline level of sensitivity to perceived provocation, zero. Something different from the normal for them, one. Item five, easily angered when requests are denied. Again, this isn't terribly uncommon, but do you see something out of the ordinary for that particular person? They overreacted. Or to be honest with you, if a person always overreacts when a request is denied and they don't, I would be suspicious of that. You know, maybe that means that something's coming. So again, it's more about deviation from baseline than yes or no. Uh, and then negative attitude, zero, no negative attitude. One, serious negative attitude, deviation from baseline. Again, it's the exact same sort of system for these, these seven different uh, dimensions. And then G, verbal threats. And of course, we're, we pay particular attention to this one. The person has shouted, they've been insulting, they've been verbally threatening or verbally intimidating to other people beyond their baseline. That's the critical part of this. So now the process. So you've looked at the seven items. You've come up with a zero or a one, depending on where that person is regarding their baseline. So we're gonna sum the scores. Then we're gonna look at their record of aggression, you know, per the patient record in recent time, and then make an estimate of risk. So we're gonna look at the last 24 hours. Many hospitals have a 24 hour sheet or a shift report. So if you remember on the bottom of that DASA sheet, you put an X for if there's been physical aggression, if there's been verbal aggression toward others, possible self-injurious behavior. And another critical point to bring here is it's important to confer with numerous staff. Where we work, the nurses are primarily in charge of the DASA, but without the use of the direct care who spend hours a day with the client in direct observation, direct interaction, it's critical. You get a better measure the more people you, you know, the more eyes and ears you have on the client. <clears throat> so here's our scoring. So we were talking before, you have a possible high score of seven and a low score of zero. If it's zero or one, you don't have to change anything. If it's what we call moderate risk, which is two or three, then you put out an alert. You don't necessarily change anything, but you just pass the word along. If the score is four or greater, now there needs to be an intervention. And this intervention has to have been thought out in advance. The crisis is not the time to develop the crisis plan, a wise man once said. Uh, so this needs to be in place. For example, in the forensic facility where I work, they have mall programming. So if a person is seen as high risk, they may not be appropriate to go to mall programming at that point. If they're low risk, you don't change anything. If they're moderate risk, maybe you notify the mall, somebody's having a bad day, keep an eye on them. If it's high risk, now we're talking about, do they go to the mall at all? Do they get a PRN? Do they need to see team? Something that has previously been agreed upon uh, should be carried out. So again, absolutely critical that this uh, for lack of a better word, nursing management plan, crisis plan, whatever you want to call it, is figured out in advance and is tailored toward that person. Because as you see in some of our other videos, sometimes this can be due to psychosis. Sometimes this can be due to some sort of environmental trigger. Sometimes it may just be something purely uh, internal. But when you get to somebody who is at moderate or particularly high risk, what's the intervention? The analogy we make is that this is like CPR. First you assess, you know, is there breathing? Is there a pulse? And then there's an intervention. You know, the information feeds the appropriate intervention. If you don't shake the person to say hello first and you jump right into chest compressions, that could go very badly for you and for the, for the client in general. Same thing here, assess and then intervene. The assessment's rather useless without an effective intervention. So just to sum up some of the stuff we talked about, risk assessment is still a developing field. However, we are getting better at it. And this is being shown by, you know, predicted rates of violence. Safety is always job one. Uh, and to help accomplish job one, DAS is a seven item method of assessing the risk of violent, destructive behavior. It's part observation and part documentation of recent behavior. What we're looking for is deviation from baseline. That's what makes the DASA work. How are they not where they usually are? Based on that, you determine what level of risk the person is and based on their level of risk, it determines the intervention. And particularly when somebody's at high risk, what is the intervention? The intervention should be mapped out in advance. The treatment team should, have, should put that together in advance so that it just becomes the job of the direct care staff to carry out what that is. Uh, so this is where we got the information from. Uh, again, this is the original um, uh, article that covers the DASA. And again, thanks very much to Michelle Gallietta who originally put these materials together for us. Uh, it's been nice talking to you today. 
uh, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. And make sure you check out some of our other videos. We have a lot of other videos uh, along the same uh, lines that feed in very nicely with this one. Take care.